You're listening to Sound, Sound. Insightful. Insightful. Insightful Bible Teaching for a Meaningful, meaningful. For a meaningful Christian, Christian Walk. Today we are talking about uh, spending time with the Lord, yeah. right? Yeah. And so this is a very important matter in our Christian life. Uh, you know, when we think about our Christian life, there's kind of two sides you could think about. One side is... Um, you could say corporate or, or collective where we, we get together with the other believers like we are right now. This is very wonderful and uh, it's very necessary to do this, right? To, to gather with other believers and there's a verse that says where two or three are gathered, he is in our midst. So the Lord is here tonight with us for sure. But there's also another side of the Christian life, right? Which is the, uh, personal, the personal side just between us and the Lord. And so that is what we're, we're focusing on today is our, our, pers- our spending personal time with the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to start off and uh, I'm going to share why we need to spend time with the Lord and also what are some of the characteristics that we should have in our time with the Lord. And Natasha will continue. She'll share primarily about when we should spend time with the Lord, when is the best time. And Isaac will finish and he'll share uh, somewhat on how to spend time with the Lord, some practical tips. Okay, so my part is on, on why. So why do we need to spend time with the Lord? Well, spending time with the Lord, uh, you could say it's like the bread and butter of the Christian life. So without spending time with the Lord, it's very difficult for uh, many things in our Christian life to happen. So if we just think about, you know, some of the things we've covered this semester. Um, earlier, we had a message on the two aspects of salvation. Actually, Isaac gave that message, I remember. Uh, and so one of the aspects of salvation is organic salvation, right? And so this is really a, a lifelong process of us growing in the Lord and includes us uh, being transformed. But, you know, when does that happen? When do we, when do we grow in life? And, and when does the transformation happen? You know, it happens through our spending time with the Lord. Uh, so we have this verse on the sheet. Maybe we could read the first one together. 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding and reflecting like a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as from the Lord's Spirit. Okay, so maybe you could circle if you have a pen or something, the word beholding. Uh, so we just sang the song, uh, very good, take time to behold him, right? So beholding the Lord is not something you can just do very quickly, uh, but it takes time. We need to spend time with the Lord in order to behold him. And when we, when we do that, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. And so this is our being saved organically, being transformed. And the song is said, by looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be, right? So this, this, for this to happen, it really requires us to spend time with the Lord. Okay, I'll just give one other example from last week. Uh, we talked about, who, what did we talk about last week? Who remembers? Shout it out. Consecration. Okay, very good. So consecration. One of the emphasis was that consecration is a progressive matter, right? Something that um, our consecration deepens as we as we go on in our Christian life. But how how does it progress? You know, um, does it just kind of happen spontaneously? Well, I'd say it happens. I'll just speak from my experience a lot from spending time with the Lord. Uh, as uh, you know, just think back um, my own experience, even in college, and and since then, often the uh, when I spend time with the Lord, I would get touched about something. You know, there's something in my, a part of my life that is actually not consecrated to the Lord. You know, whether that be something about my future or about my present. Um, and the Lord touches me, but that uh, uh, gains a deeper consecration. But that wouldn't have happened without spending time with the Lord, right? right. Mm-hmm. So these are just a couple uh, quick examples tying back into previous uh, messages about how spending time with the Lord is such a crucial matter in our Christian life. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Then if we look at the next set of verses there, all right, Ephesians 5 and Revelation 19, this kind of uh, shows us maybe a different angle of why spending time, it's really the same thing, but why spending time with the Lord is important. And so this is related to developing our personal relationship with the Lord. And this is something we need to do because we are going to marry the Lord. All right, so I think we covered this somewhat last semester, but uh, in Ephesians 5 there, we see this... uh, picture of husbands and wives is actually a picture of Christ and the church, right? And then in Revelation 19, 
It says very explicitly, the marriage of the Lamb has come. So this is sometime in the future. We will marry the Lord. And so, okay, there he is. Will. Yeah. You recently got married, right? Is that true? Okay. Will recently got married. Now, would you have married Magali if you had not spent any time with her? Probably not. Probably not, yeah. Okay, that's the right answer. You know, you shouldn't marry someone if you've never spent any time with them. That's probably a bad idea. And so it's the same. Okay, we know we're going to marry the Lord, right? So that, what does that tell us? We need to spend time with the Lord, right? We need to get to know the Lord. Uh, we're going to be spending eternity with him. We need to get to know him now. So we're, we're, we're even so we're ready for the wedding. Um, so, yeah, so these verses uh, that I had, had on here in Ephesians and Revelation, you know, you could say this is kind of more the, the corporate aspect of the church is going to marry Christ. The church is going to be the bride to marry Christ the husband. But this is also a very personal matter. Um, and there's probably no better book in the Bible to see that than a book in the Old Testament called Song of Songs. All right. And so I'm going to share a little bit from Song of Songs. Who's read Song of Songs before? Raise your hand. Okay, most people in this room. That's very good. So uh, I uh, found out how many verses are in Song of Songs. There's 117 verses in the Song of Songs. And um, somebody throw out a guess. How many of those verses mention something about love or beloved or lovely or, or some variation of that word out of 117? 100. 100? Okay. You said 117? All right. It's not quite that high. It's actually 43. Okay. So maybe not as high as you, you were guessing, but it's still a, actually a, quite a large number. Over one third of the book uh, ha explicitly uses the word love or you know beloved or something like that in the verse. And so this is really the emphasis of the book of Song of Songs is the love. And in the book, it's between uh, Solomon, who is the king, and uh, the Shulamite, who was a country girl. Uh, but we know that this is a portrait of the love between Christ as the bridegroom and uh, the believers, his lovers as his bride, right? And so the emphasis actually in Song of Songs is less on the the kind of the corporate aspect of like the church being the bride and actually more on the personal relationship between uh, us and the Lord. Okay. And this is a very intimate and loving relationship as illustrated by the number of verses that say love. Okay. I just have, so I could have picked 43 verses on here, but I just picked one of them. Song of Songs 1, 16a. So we can, we can read that one together. My beloved is mine and I am his. All right, so this is just um, one verse that uh, illustrates that this, this is a book uh, showing our progressive development of our love and our, and our personal relationship with the Lord. Okay, so in the remaining few minutes that I have, I'm going to share a little bit about, you know, as we spend the time with the Lord, um, what are some characteristics of our time with the Lord and uh, our personal relationship with Him? Okay, so by the first set of, next set of verses I have there, Maybe you can write the word private in the margin or and also the word hidden. So this is one aspect uh, or characteristic of our relationship with the Lord and our time with him is that at least what we're talking about today, it should be private and hidden. So in Matthew 6, 6, it says explicitly, when you pray, enter into your private room and shut your door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will repay you. So we have the word private right there. And um, the next two verses, I want you to circle in Matthew 13, 6, root. And then in Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, roots. Okay, so we won't read through the verses for the sake of time, but you can read through them on your own. But these verses show us that as a Christian, we need to have a, a root system. So... The roots are the part of a tree that is hidden below the ground, right? So no, nobody sees the roots. Um, but the roots are necessary for the tree to be able to, to, to survive, right? And so it's the same in our Christian life. You know, what we're talking about today is, is what uh, some other, the other brothers and sisters may never, and actually should never see this. This is all, we're talking about our personal hidden relationship with the Lord, our root system that we're developing day by day as we spend time with him. Uh, and actually, this root system is what keeps us and sustains us in our Christian life. 
Okay, so we really, we really need to have strong roots. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, next set of verses here, starting with Song of Songs 1 2. I want you to write uh, intimate. So, this is another aspect of our relationship with the Lord uh, and our personal time with Him should be intimate. And so, we have the verse Song of, uh, Song of Songs 1 2. Let Him kiss me with the kisses of His mouth, for your love is better than wine. Okay, so there's nothing that can be more intimate than kissing someone with the kisses of your mouth, right? So, this is. This is something you can actually ask the Lord when you wake up in the morning. Lord, I want you to kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done that before, but this, this is the kind of relationship we should have with the Lord. So uh, personal and intimate, right? Uh, and so when we have such an intimate relationship, you know, one thing that happens is that you can share whatever is on your heart with that person. And that person can share whatever is on their heart with you, right? Like, you know, I love on hell here, but... There are certain things that I would tell Rebecca that I wouldn't tell on help, as much as I love him, right? So there's a different level of intimacy in the relationship, right? But actually, there are certain things that I would tell the Lord that I might not even tell Rebecca, right? So this, the Lord is actually our most intimate, should be our most intimate relationship. Um, and so I'm not going to go through all these examples for the sake of time, but um, maybe I'll just go to the last one, Acts 10.9. So these examples here were just examples of people telling the Lord what's on his heart. Uh, we have Hannah, and then also the Lord telling them what's on his heart. That also happened with Hannah. We, you know, we covered that in the retreat. It happened with the Lord Jesus. And then in Acts 10.9, it happened with Peter. So the story, it says here that Peter went up to the housetop to pray around the sixth hour. So Peter actually had a set time for prayer. He spent some time with the Lord uh, in secret, in private. And what came out of this was the Lord unveiled to him that he should go preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So before this, the gospel had never been preached to the Gentiles. Um, but it was through Peter's time with the Lord that the Lord was able to move in such an important way, right? So uh, who, who in this room is a Gentile? <laughs> so basically, if you're not a Jew, a Jew is like a Hebrew, you're a Gentile. So I think it's probably pretty much everyone. So the gospel may not have ever come to us if Peter hadn't spent personal time with the Lord. So it's really crucial that we can spend personal time with the Lord, to have this intimate relationship so that the Lord can avail what's on his heart to us. Okay, so then the last verse here, and I'll finish up, is uh, 2 Timothy 4.22. And so the word I want you to write is spiritual. Okay, so, and what I mean by spiritual is that you need to use your spirit to spend time with the Lord. Uh, because the Lord, you know, as you know, we cannot see him with our eyes. Uh, we cannot hear him with our ears. Uh, like So like, you know, if I'm talking to Julius there behind the camera, I would, you know, make eye contact with him. I would listen to what he's saying, you know. But we can't really do that with the Lord. So how do we contact and spend time with the Lord? Well, we need to use our, our human spirit, okay? And I think Isaac will share more about that at the end. Uh, but first, Natasha will take it from here. Hello, everyone. I'm Natasha, also a staff member in the club here, and I, and I need you. to speak louder. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk more about when we spend time with the Lord, because as Leon just shared, it's really important that we do. And actually, it's a precious gift that we even as Christians can spend time with the God of the universe. We have a very precious person living in us, and we get to spend time with him every day. And so as Christians, we can actually spend time with him any time of the day, right? It's good to spend time with him in the, in the afternoons. It's good to spend Jesus breaks. It's good to spend time with him before you go to bed at night. Um, it is the best way to put your heart at rest before you sleep. But there's actually one time of day that is particularly the most important time of day. Does anyone have any idea what that is? Any guesses? Yes. On how say that louder. In the morning? Yes, in the morning. <laughs> so actually, I think we've all heard that a lot, but I really want to impress you that the morning is the most valuable time to spend with the Lord. It's the most precious. It's the most important. And it means probably more than any other time of day. Because in the morning, you are when you are your freshest. You are not busy with your day yet. 
all the thoughts that are going to come up, all of the things that you're going to have to take care of, all of, all of just the general busyness hasn't come in yet. You know, you wake up and your thoughts aren't all there yet. Your feelings haven't gotten all riled up yet about the good things, the bad things, all the things. The things aren't there yet, but the Lord is, and the Lord is waiting. So before it all comes in, the most important thing you can do when you first open your eyes, when you first regain consciousness, is to just turn and, and spend time with the Lord. And I, I'm, Isaac will tell you more about how much time to spend with the Lord and all that, but the very first thing you do is contact God. Um, so I want to, oh, and also I just want to say this, this really sets the tone for your day. Because when you wake up and you don't spend time with the Lord, you wake up, you're late, you're running late to class, you might get coffee on the way, and you, you slide in and you're just irritated and everything's bothering you, and the person who's driving cut you off, and it's just like, you're, who you are at that moment is not all that pleasant. Maybe it is a little bit outwardly, but you are just not in the right headspace because you, you haven't touched the Lord yet. But honestly, those moments when you get up and you just say, good morning, Lord, and just however much time you can spend with him, you are a different person. You've set the tone for your day. Someone cuts you off and you don't even notice. <laughs> you know, just like you're in a different headspace. You're in a different place because you've touched the God of the universe and that means everything. So I want to get to um, Exodus 16, which has a beautiful picture of this. Um, in Exodus 16, we see the type of manna. Now, the children of Israel, we talked about with the matter of baptism, they crossed the Red Sea and entered the wilderness. And when they entered the, the wilderness, they only got to eat one thing for 40 years, and that was manna. But manna is actually what strengthened them to be formed as an army. Manna is what enabled them to enter into the good land. Manna was everything. Um, but manna, if you read, uh, I think it's verse 15 on here. Um, anyway, I, I can't read and speak at the same time. But anyway, manna only came at one time of day. Manna only came not just in the morning, but actually before the sun rose. It came with the dew. Because when the sun rose, manna melted. So if you got up too late to get the manna, you didn't get to eat that day. Um, and if you compare this with John 6, actually the Lord says, I am the bread of life. So actually our, our getting up to spend time with the Lord is our gathering of the manna. It's our getting our real nourishment. And it's not that you can't touch the Lord later in the day. You can, and you should. And even if you miss out on your time with the Lord because you were running late to class and all the busyness came in, it doesn't mean you can't still spend time with the Lord. You should rescue your day. But you did miss out on however much time you didn't have with the Lord earlier, you know? And so the, the other thing I want to say, too, is manna was collected every single morning. Because if they tried to save any manna, the next day it bred worms and it stank. So just spending time with the Lord in the morning once in a while, it's good once in a while. But if you want to have that portion every day, if you want Christ to be nourishing you every day, if you want him to be rich and precious to you personally every day, then you need to start every day with him. Um, all right. Okay, so I want to touch some of these examples in here. I, I don't have time to touch all of them, uh, but I really appreciated the story of Jacob in Genesis 28. So Jacob lays down and he has this dream of the house of God, and I'll let you read the, the vision yourself. But actually, it's the, after he has this dream, the next verse says, he rose up very early the next morning, right? And that was when he built an altar. And that was when he poured the oil on the stone and named it Bethel. So it happened very early in the morning. And then um, when Joshua was in Joshua 3, 1, when Joshua was bringing the children to the River Jordan before they entered the good land, he had a whole group of millions of people to cross. So what did he do? He rose up very early in the morning before he brought the children across the river and into the good land. And then probably the, the most important one is Jesus himself. Um, so I appreciate in Mark 1, Jesus was a very, very busy man. <laughs> Jesus had people to save. He had demons to cast out. He had lots and lots of people to visit. But the way he spent his day was to get up before anyone else while it was still night even. And he went away privately to a place where no one could find him. If you read the next verse, verse 36, Simon is looking all over for him and can't find him. Because Jesus went somewhere new. I don't want to t talk to anyone else before I spend time with the Father. The Father is the most important thing. He had a lot to do that day. 
And Jesus is the God of the universe, but even he knew, I need to have face-to-face -face time with my Father before I cast out demons, before I preach the coming of the kingdom, before anything else comes to my Father. And so I, I, I want to talk a little bit personally because we all have our own feelings about mornings. Um, mornings are not easy for every one of us. Some of us are morning people. We get up and we immediately get busy because that's when we're energetic and the most active and the most capable. And so we like to get up early and get a lot done. I am not one of those people. <laughs> I wake up and I love my pillow <laughs> and my blanket and I don't want to get up. But like I said earlier, I'm one of those people, if I haven't spent time with the Lord, it's, it's obvious to me. And the more that happens, it's definitely obvious to you. Um, if you contact me and I've been having time with the Lord, I think you know. And if I haven't, you know. I just know, I, I know that you know, because I, anyway, it's not pleasant. But um, <laughs> honestly, but um, anyway, every morning we just need to come to the Lord and give the Lord the first place by giving him the first part of our day. I'll let Isaac take from there what you do with that time of day. promises to fulfill <laughs> not much time to fulfill them um, but you know it's, it's really wonderful that to see our need to have such a private hidden intimate and spiritual relationship with the Lord this is the kind of relationship that God desires to have with us we shouldn't settle for anything less and the really the best time to cultivate and nurture this kind of a relationship is morning by morning we start our day, we build our foundation. We start, we start the day with the Lord. And it's easier to spend the rest of the day in His presence. And so, okay, let's say we, we decide it in our heart. We, we respond to this word, say, okay, I want to try this. And I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> uh, do I read the Bible? Do I say something? Or should I just meditate in silence? I mean, these are all very valid questions. You know, many of us in this room may have never had this kind of a time with the Lord. Just putting aside time to do nothing but spend time with the Lord. We may never have had this kind of experience before, and that's okay. We're here to learn. Um, if you look at the, the last set of verses, this is a really cool um, analogy. It says, uh, Paul, uh, Paul is speaking to Timothy. He says, Exercise yourself unto godliness. Bodily exercise is profitable for a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Actually, godliness, all the things of God, the things of the spiritual life and experience, is very, very similar to exercising in the physical realm. You know, if, if you're our long-term goal, you know, if, you're, if you've read day one of the, of the um, weekly nourishment, you might have read the part where it says, you know, even anything less than 30 minutes is insufficient. And you may read that and go, oh man, I, I'm, I'm a goner. You know, I can't, I can't spend 30 minutes praying. You know, Zach and I, we spent two and a half hours playing ping pong on Saturday. But you try to ask Zach and I to pray for two and a half hours, I, mean, I don't know if we could make it, you know. But this is a real exercise, right? Because we've been exercising our physical bodies, we can do that. But and because we haven't been exercising our spiritual muscle as much as we would like to, we can't do that. Um, but this is very much a little by little progressive matter. It's just like exercise. We the most important thing is to have something consistent and have something regular. Have something at a set time. Lord, as soon as I wake up, I want to give you the first five minutes of my day. And in Matthew six six. It says, when you pray, enter into your private room. Where is your private room? Mm -hmm. You know, I lived in the, in, in, the, in the dorms my first year in college. I lived in a triple. I, I didn't have a room to myself. You know, I didn't have like a closet or anything I could go into. But what I had was my roommates woke up at like 10. <laughs> so I just woke up at like, well, I woke up really early, actually. I woke up at like four, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's... Find a way to get a private place for yourself. If anything, just use the restroom, you know, for five, ten minutes. Find a private room where you can really be private. And the second matter is, and shut your door. 
Find a private room and shut your door. Now, there's, there's so many doors that we need, we need to shut. Not just the physical door. But one of the greatest doors in the world is this device right here. You know, this is the gateway to the, the whole world. The whole world is really at your fingertips as long as you have this device on you. And a really practical point to improve your time with the Lord is to put this away. Put it on silent. Um, just keep, make it so there's no possibility of something coming in to distract you. You know, because the enemy hates that you would want to spend time with the Lord. And he would love to just send you a notification that would just end your time with the Lord. It would just take away the sweetness that you have in, the, in, in that moment with the Lord. So a very easy thing to do is just put it on silent, put it away. You know, Lord, this is, this is my time with you. I want to shut this door. You know, no, another door that, that we can shut is all these wandering thoughts that we have in our mind. That can just lead to this and that. You know, you realize, oh, I forgot to do my laundry. I need to do that. You know, like, why at this point do I suddenly remember all the things I have to do? I'm so clear. You know, at any other point of the day, you ask me, I, I don't know what I should be doing right now. But right when I want to spend time with the Lord, that's when I'm clear. That's when all these things start coming. You know, so if you can, I mean, you could just exercise to ignore it. Or a very practical way to take care of those things is to have a, a pen and paper with you. And if something comes to mind, just write it down and put it aside. And continue continue your time with the Lord. Um, and really... You know, the, the, the point of spending time with the Lord is to spend time with the Lord. Yeah. It's not just to spend time. Right. It's, just, it's not just to, okay, five minutes, I'm just not going to do anything. And then, okay, you know. But our goal in this time is to touch the Lord. If we don't touch the Lord, we fail. If we've read five chapters of the Bible, but we haven't touched the Lord, we fail. If we've, I don't know what you do, but if we don't touch the Lord, we fail. The goal of this time is to spend time with the Lord. And God is spirit. I want you to underline that in John 4, 24. God is spirit. This is what God is. If you want to touch the Lord, you have to exercise your spirit. And we're all learning what this means, right? This is, this is our exercising unto godliness. This is our practice. Our, it's like a muscle that we, we just haven't used that often. We don't know how to use it. You know, if you've never used a muscle, like I remember I was doing a, a workout, like one of those like YouTube workouts. And it's just a lot of extra like movements I've never really done. And it was only like, I only did like two or three, but like I had delayed onset muscle soreness like the next day or in two days. Like I was dying, you know? And it wasn't like, it was because I'd never used those muscles before. Our spirit is like a muscle that we just, our whole lives have never used before. And we're just learning how to use it. And one of the easiest ways, the easiest way to exercise your spirit is to call on His name. I, I would, I would, I would uh, uh, encourage you to try this. When you wake up tomorrow morning, just set like a three-minute timer and just call on His name. Just Cry out to Him. Just be content with being in His presence. Really touch your spirit. Touch the spirit in your spirit. Call on His name. Uh, just try it tomorrow morning. And see what a difference it makes in, in the rest of whatever you do. Maybe you'll go on to read the Word. Maybe you'll go on to sing a song. There's so many ways we can spend time with the Lord. But at the end of the day, have we touched our spirit? Have we really spent time with the Lord? Mm -hmm. Have we really spent time beholding Him? Mm -hmm. Right? And this all happens in our spirit. So, I just want to leave you with one verse. Psalm 81.10. I think this is just a wonderful verse. The end of the verse, this is Jehovah's promise to us. It says, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Amen. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. That's His promise to us. If in the morning we open our mouth wide to call on Him, what is He going to do? He's going to fill it. He's going to fill us with Himself. 
He's going to give us his, his very self, his very being, his very person. He's going to infuse more of himself into us. This is the greatest goal. This is the greatest reward that we could ask for. What a way to start our day. You know, and of course, like Natasha mentioned, this isn't just restricted and limited to the morning. But we do want to get into the habit of spending time with the Lord. Intentional, purposeful time set apart to develop and cultivate this kind of a personal, affectionate, intimate, and spiritual relationship with the Lord.